26-mile trip from downtown Minneapolis to the state capital in St. Paul, Janice Klecker won the women's division again. The Olympic marathoner didn't even enter until yesterday. She was concerned about her limited time training since the Barcelona Games. Her time, 2.36.50, was more than six minutes slower than last year, hurt by the heat. Kenyan David Mungai won the men's division in his first marathon, 2.15.33. Not too bad. I said a beautiful 26-mile trip, that is, if you're in a taxi cab. Right, not bad. Mm -hmm. And we need to honor another marathon That's runner. Right. One yes. of our own technician, Bill Oliver, who is, is in he? the control room right there. Bill? There he is. All right. Ran the Bill. marathon. All right. Let's hear it for Bill. He's got his T-shirt on, his Medal of Honor. Yes, folks, he's still standing after four hours on the pavement. Came, Way to go, Bill. Came to work after that. Came to work, and now he's got to run back into the Tate room to run this next commercial <laughs> break. He's going to write a book, I'm told, called Oliver's Travels. Right. <laughs> That's great, Bill. And he came to work. That's nice going, me. Bill. Had a good time. Yeah, we'll be right back. <laughs> I've always wondered exactly what she does in there. Neutrogena products are now 30% off at Target. She's usually pretty quiet, except for maybe an occasional chorus of <laughs> Moon River. For instance, Neutrogena shampoo and conditioner are just $3.49 each. I'd like to think she does it all for me, but I think she does it for herself, too. For the health of your hair, the glow of your skin, for him, for you. Neutrogena now 30% off at Target. Well, hello there. Hi. Something's going on at your Jeep and Eagle dealer. It's a clearance sale. It's the end of the model year. Save big. And your dealer wants to make room for all the new models. Save really big. Get a Jeep Cherokee and save up to $29.75. Blow it on yourself. Or get up to $1,500 back on Eagle Talon. Hey, count it. Or save up to $1,000 on Eagle Summit. Party. Not too many people. All of America. Know about this. Money, money, money. Event, so take your time. Hurry in now. This offer will run forever. And soon. See your great northern Jeep and Eagle dealer, where you can expect the best. Last month, I was meeting with Phil, our biggest customer, when I got the bad news. It's not easy working with you. Your lines are always busy. You can bet I solved that problem. Now I have enough phone lines, and I have them organized, with some for customers, one for my fax, and others for our computers, which means anyone can reach us, especially Phil. Call U.S. West to add the phone lines your business needs. U.S. West Communications, making the most of your time. You may not know the people who benefit from United Way, but it's somebody's son, somebody's father, somebody's neighbor, somebody's co-worker, somebody's grandmother, somebody's best friend. But most of all, it's somebody just like you. Please give generously to United Way, because our help is their hope. Well, if you were really hungry today, the place to be was Las Cruces, New Mexico. The 12th annual whole enchilada fiesta was held to celebrate the chili harvest. And what a better way to celebrate than to cook the world's largest enchilada. Yes, a 600-pounder was whipped up. 35 people helped cook the massive tortilla. Then 200 gallons of chili sauce was added and 100 pounds of cheese on top. <laughs> The 10 feet in diameter enchilada fed more than 1,000 people. Talk about a heartburn. Oh, huh? heartburn, yeah. <laughs> Well, after eating something like that, you need a pretty big bed to flop into. Aha, uh -huh, but we have just the bed for you. It's the world's most expensive waterbed now on tour in the U.S. This Titanic sleeper costs $150,000 and weighs more than a ton. But hey, it's fully loaded, complete with a brain massager to stimulate relaxing alpha waves while you slumber. And of course, surround sound with 34 speakers. And get this, a surveillance camera to check out what's going on outside your bed or maybe to show you who's trying to get into the sea mattress with you there. We're mm. talking total decadence, huh? Oh, it goes three miles an hour. You can even hour. take a spin on it, three miles an hour. How does wow. the rain sound when it hits that thing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll have to get to that on another day, I think, Matt. Thanks, Thanks. for joining us. Have a good week, everybody. I've had myself locked in this trailer with a 2,500-pound Brahma bull to demonstrate the concept of odds. Well, these would not be considered good odds. For better odds, I could simply play Daily 3 from the Minnesota State Lottery with the best odds and big prizes. Daily 3. For big prizes, the odds are tipped.
a little more in your favor. What are you looking at? Haven't you ever seen a red sweater before? Let's hang it right at the tower, DJ. DHL, faster to more of the world. What's happening at today's WCCO? Moving. See for yourself. Today's WCCO News. We won't miss a beat. You won't miss a thing. Can you give me some guidelines in dealing with returns and exchanges so I feel like I'm doing the right thing with a customer? The best rule of thumb would be this. Whatever you would do for your best friend is what you should do for every men's warehouse customer. Imagine being dragged from your car by thugs who want to steal it. Could you be safer riding in a subway than driving in your own car? How can you protect yourself from the terror of carjacking? On the next Donahue, Monday morning at 8 on Channel 4. You're watching WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Thea, this is not the Metrodome crowd I remember. I remember coming into this place and having it be completely hostile. I mean, the only time these people are getting up right now is to let somebody else that's been either in the restroom or getting a, a Coke and a dog early. <laughs> Not so fast, Mr. CBS. Oh, it was awesome today. I'll tell you what, those people were great. Not so fast, Mr. Center. Early on, there wasn't much to cheer about, except for bearheads. The Vikings needed something, and that something was provided by Mr. Safety. That was the spark right there. That sparked us. I mean, we were uh, we were hanging in there trying to show some character, but it was getting to be a long day, getting to be real frustrating for us, and uh, that really just ignited the whole team. Tonight, a world where people have names like Carl Lee and Randall McDaniel. Also, a lone wolf, Jack McCloskey, and Tom Selleck talks twins. Sparks fuel fire in the belly of the beast. Didn't Madonna say that? Tonight, live from the Twin Cities, welcome to Rosen Sports Sunday. Brought to you by Champion Auto Stores and Crown Auto Service Centers, where you can do it yourself or we'll do it for you. And by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. Night is falling on the Twin Cities. Sports Sunday is coming at your life tonight. Rose and Sports Sunday. Sports Sunday. Wanna be live tonight? Short head but cool. In a game that Rosie don't cover. Kick back. Cool out, it's time for another. Rose and Sports Sunday. Rose and Sports Sunday. Rose and Sports Sunday. As we get our microphone all in place here, good evening and welcome. And yes, no way the Vikings would have come close to winning this game a year ago, or the year before that, or... Hey, forget everything else that's happened this season. In one quarter of football, the Vikings put their stamp on what could be a change of the guard in the Central Division. The Bears are reeling and Mike Ditka is pointing fingers, and the favorite Detroit Lions are going backwards at 1-4, and four, at least for now. Well, you've heard it said, the spark that kindled the Vikings' victory was fueled by Todd Scott's interception and touchdown. It set the home team on fire and certainly set a blaze in the belly of Coach Mike Ditka. Look at Ditka. I'll paraphrase there. I can't believe you threw that ball. I don't think he was open. What were you thinking? That, that is really paraphrasing. <laughs> if the situation arises well, again, there will be changes made, and they'll be definite, and they'll be permanent. That's all I'll say. I'm not going to 
put 47 guys uh, careers in the hand of uh, somebody who thinks he knows more than I know does it surprise me no Dick fumed at his quarterback for calling this audible It was Harbaugh's only audible of the game. Here it goes. Interception, Todd Scott. Touchdown, Minnesota. When you tried to beat him, how did, how did you do that? I lined up in the zone technique trying to make him think that I was playing deeper than what I was, and he tried to throw the quick stop to Anderson before I could get there, and I just stepped in front of him and was able to get it. Yeah, this was a great one. I mean, it was to struggle for three quarters. Just hang in there and hang in there, and then Todd Scott makes that big play and just ignites this boy. That's great. You know, as Howard Cosell would say, that's a complete mastery of the obvious. Is it ever? And defensive back Carl Lee is with us uh, tonight. And Carl, my first question to you is, uh, Todd Scott, you're talking about suckering Jim Harbaugh on that play. How easy was that for him? And did that confuse Harbaugh to the extent that he threw that pass and called that audible? Actually, it did. Um, and it's, a, it's kind of a veteran move. You know, you, you show him one thing knowing you're going to do the other. And I think Harbaugh, he read Todd as playing deep in the zone, thought he could throw the stop. Todd stepped in front, but, you know, we've worked with Todd on the running. He hadn't been very good on his running, and I guess he wanted to prove that everybody can run the ball back. So, Hey, what comes to mind when you see Mike Ditka in a situation like that, berating his quarterback for calling one audible that backfired? It was a mistake, but mistakes are made. What, what are your thoughts about that? I, I think it would be very difficult as a player and, and a player who's supposed to be the leader of the offense, maybe even your leader for your team, to take that kind of abuse because then it just opens up the doors for everybody else. And I think it would be very difficult to be able to play, and I think he's probably going to cause a problem with inside that team mm -hmm. and uh, definitely for Harbaugh. Well, this has been his mode of operation. It's been successful, but at least for now, we'll have to see if it happens after the bye week. Well, offensively, the Vikings killed themselves with penalties and turnovers at every turn of the first half, Carl, as you know. And meanwhile, the Bears were giving the Vikings at the time a teacher-pupil lesson on the finer points of taking advantage of those turnovers. Now, right before halftime, on a third and eight, Jim Harbaugh went to reliable Tom Waddle. And, Carl, you had man-to-man -man coverage on him. You were right on him. This is the way you're supposed to uh, play this play. Well, well, I knew the ball was coming about the five-yard line. I tried to pin him get a view of the ball and I seen the ball go by my hand and I seen it hit him in his gut and it was just it was kind of disappointing because you know some guys you just hate to give any any big plays and you hear a lot about him making big plays but you can't take anything from him he's a great receiver and he comes up with big catches there's a touchdown the, the Bears start the third quarter already leading 13 nothing 91 yard drive 10 and a half minutes here's the key play right here well, it, it kind of became a game of, of near misses and, and close calls. I mean, we were close on a lot of plays that could have turned the game completely around, but we were, we were just a step off of everything, and it just seemed that things were going their way. It was 13 nothing at the half. This made it 20 to nothing on the quarterback drive. Everyone was yelling from the sidelines. Did you feel it coming? No, I really wasn't even thinking, which I probably should have been, but I probably wouldn't have had any uh, effect. I think we were kind of caught a little off guard in the secondary because they had been throwing the ball and we were thinking about them going to Waddle. So I think that kind of pulled everybody from the middle. Let's face it, as we mentioned, uh, the first half wasn't very pretty for the Vikings. The Vikings uh, had a touchdown called back, suffered one interception and two fumbles by Terry Allen. Parting is such sweet sorrow unless you are Terry Allen, parting ways with the pigskin. Well, the team helped me do that. You know, the guys kept telling me just come back and play because we still got to come out and play football. Just because I fumbled the ball, you know, that's not the end of the world. Come back and play. In the fourth quarter, inspired by Scott's TD, the Vikings turned to tricks. We said watch out for the reverse and then maybe a pass. There it is. And the Vikings are moving. In the midst of seven consecutive first down completions, the Vikings were bearing the Bears with the screen pass. Uh, they was running screen, screen left, screen right, and it was, it was getting some, uh, it was getting blockers out there, and uh, happened that you know that you know they got uh, two good running backs, and they happened they made the yard. Again into Chris Carter, cut Chicago's lead to six points. I had an idea what I wanted to do, but I was kind of squirming in my seat. I must admit a little bit. <laughs> the worm and Ditka's stomach turned when Roger Craig's one-yard run and Fouad the Foot's extra point gave the Vikings the lead. We saw a lot of attitude out there, and uh, guys just didn't believe, they didn't believe that we could, could lose. For a quarter there, we put our heads in the sand like an ostrich. Boy, that was a tough locker room, but to all pro guard Randall McDaniels here, and he threw the block um, from the backfield on Roger Craig's game-winning touchdown. And 
I'll tell you what, Randy, you know, Mike Ditka can blame Jim Harbaugh all he wants. The Bears were still up, though, 20-7 to after that touchdown, and it still was up to the Vikings to score a couple touchdowns in that fourth quarter. Did the confidence, was it within the team already that you could move the ball and score now yeah, on the Bears? The confidence was there. We, we had been moving the ball all day. Just we kept stopping ourselves, like you said, fumble here, interception there. But we were moving it, so we knew we could move it. And like C. Lee said, when um, Todd got that interception, that like sparked us a little more. We wanted to go out and do that much better, and we came out and got the ball. They got the ball back to us, went down, made the drive, scored. They got the ball back for us again, and we just tuck it down, and we knew we were going to take it down and score. The Bears have always prided themselves on a great defense. They still have some of the big names of Singletary and Dent, McMichael, William Perry. Have you noticed a drop off in the level of their play? They, they, they still play the game pretty well. I mean, there was a little drop off. They had some of the younger guys coming in the game tonight. Yeah. But um, they still play well. They, they read well. They, they still can cause some problems. But um, it was just a matter of we wanted it more tonight, and no one gave up. I want you to stick around here because you can hear a nice comment from the guy who you blocked for in that fourth quarter. That's Roger Craig. Because the measure of a good offense and its quarterback is how they perform trailing in the fourth quarter. And Rich Gannon really answered a lot of critics and questions today. The play calling and execution on their final drive was really of playoff caliber. The 78-yard drive was finalized, as we mentioned, when Roger Craig blasted in here on Randall McDaniel's broad coattails. Craig scored the touchdown, but McDaniel got the spike the ball. He took it right away from Roger. Give me that football. Craig has never enjoyed a blocking machine more than Randall McDaniel. Hey, I believe in Randall. <laughs> That's one guy, if a war breaks out, he's on my side. Because <laughs> I want him next to me at all times. The guy is outstanding, man. <laughs> Randall, uh, that was quite a tussle in the end zone for that football. Huh? <laughs> it was kind of a little deal. I mean, Craig hasn't scored one since he's been here yet. He got him in preseason, but he hasn't got one in the regular season. You hear so much about this leadership uh, stereotype that certain players get. For Roger Craig, is it real, and how does he give it to the rest of the team if there is such a thing? I don't, man, he, I mean, he is, he's been around. You know, he's, he's been in the tough games. He's been in the Super Bowls, and it's just that, it's that aura about him. And you, you know, he's got the mm -hmm. confidence in it. You feed off of that. I mean, just having him there, it's fun to have him back there. Well, it really is. He certainly gives the Vikings that added depth. And, Carl, very quickly, you talk about leadership. You made a little speech to your teammates at halftime day, trailing 13 nothing. Could you share some of what you said to them today? Well, basically, I, I was just trying to let everybody know that guys are going to have good plays, bad plays, but we have to be as a team. We have to support each other in the locker room, on the sidelines, because you're, you're going to get bashed by the, by the fans. You're going to get bashed by the media. Uh, only people that you can really count on is your teammates, and sometimes it's tough. The offense is not moving or we're not stopping. You want to point fingers, but... If this team can stick together and lift the guy up who's, who's having a bad day, this team can go a long ways. Carl Lee and Randall McDaniel, you certainly took a big step towards going a long ways today. Thanks so much for stopping by tonight. Thank All you. right, Rosie. All right, well, let's look ahead to next week, shall we? Tell me what's going on. Next week. Next week, a game, right? Brain surgeon? Not. Okay, how about a special show with Greg Minuski and Tim Irwin? Andy McPhail and the Birds? Your Daily Three ticket could be your second chance to win. So send it in to the Daily Three Spin. It's another shot at winning thousands of dollars, and it comes around twice a week. So watch the Daily Three spin every Monday and Thursday during the Daily Three drawing show. Send it in, and go for the spin. It is very beautiful here. B-15. It's better than Vegas. Ladies seem to like the uniform. The soup is quite good. B-15. I like all the lights. That was the quarter I gave you. Hey, Ma, what's up next? Rosen Sports Sunday, Rosen Sports Sunday, Rosen Sports Sunday, Rosen Sports Sunday. Sports Sunday. Sports Sunday. Sports Sunday.
Well, the old saying, you can't tell the players without a scorecard, has never been more appropriate in describing the roster of the Minnesota Timberwolves this fall. And it's all because of the man they call Trader Jack. And boy, I'm sure he's sick of that nickname by now. Jack McCloskey has really done it all in pro basketball. The architect of the World Championship Detroit Pistons, but he's not slowing down. Forget it. He's running full speed. He's got a new challenge, and why not? Trying to lift the expansion Timberwolves from the bottom of the NBA to respectability and beyond. You can find Mr. McCloskey in the golf course, the tennis court, in the weight room, and making a few trades this year. Jack, thanks for staying stopped by tonight. My pleasure. Why did you want this job with the Timberwolves? I wanted to see the Vikings win that game today. <laughs> <laughs> you can go home now. <laughs> no, uh, certainly uh, a new challenge. I went home, I, I talked to Leslie, I said, uh, how'd you like to start all over again? And she mm -hmm. said, no, you've you got to be kidding me. And uh, I said, no, I said, I'd really like to take a shot at that. Well, it's, it's working out, and, and you hear that nickname, Trader Jack, do you mind it? Is it I mean, it's, it's, your, it's associated with it. You've already pulled the plug in a couple of big trades with Pooh Richardson, and Sam Mitchell, Scotty Brooks, maybe more to come. No, not really. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't mind it. Uh, what do you see that um, the fans are going to be ra rallying around with this basketball team? Because it used to be, and it hasn't been that long, the Wolves just go to the target center, at least the fans, to maybe watch the stars of the opposition. Do you feel it's going to be different this year? Well, we, we'd like to get to that point. Uh, it was very similar to what uh, the Detroit situation was. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the fans came there to see the opposition. Uh, it soon changed. They came to see their team win, and uh, that's what we want to happen here, too. How do you go about selling your players when you move into a trade situation? I mean, there's a lot of talk about Pooh Richardson. The trade was made. Do you have to sell them to their attributes to another team? There's still some talk about perhaps even Luke Longley or someone like that. Or is it just the other team coming to you and seeing something that they like in them? Well, it's, uh, trades start a number of ways. Uh, you can be in a telephone conversation, uh, meetings, uh, league meetings. Uh, you initiate the thing. Possibly someone else mm -hmm. initiates. But, but it is important that communication take place. And, uh, obviously, uh, I think with the Richardson-Mitchell uh, uh, deal, we gave up uh, certainly an outstanding player in Pooh, uh, mm -hmm. and Indiana wanted a, a defender to balance out their team. And we got two outstanding players, I think, in Chuck Person and Michael Williams in that deal. They'll be two regulars that will play a great deal. You're going to have a different look, as we said, with Person, Williams, uh, Chris Smith, Marlon Maxey, but not likely, at least at the start of camp, Christian Leitner, the third overall pick in the NBA draft from Duke, said he wanted to get here from the start of camp, but... Uh, and I'm sure he probably does want to, but the business of basketball, Jack, will probably prevent him from doing that. Leitner will apparently not sign until Alonzo Mourning, the second round pick, selected right ahead of him, sets the market price with Charlotte. Is this a frustrating part of the business that you're experiencing right now with Leitner, the big market uh, marketability guy that you have here? Well, uh, Bob Stein's handling those negotiations, and, and he, he will make an offer there that uh, I, I don't know how they can turn down. Because, first of all, I think that... Uh, the first four or five guys in the draft, now this is, this is a ridiculous statement, will average more as rookies than what the all-star team averaged last year. Wow. And that, that shows you the system is wrong. So there'll be a salary cap for rookies in the NBA? Do you think they'll ever come to that day? I don't know if it'll ever get that because the Players Association would have to be involved. Yeah. And I would think uh, it's more beneficial that money be paid to veteran players who have proven themselves rather than untried rookies. But again, uh, you're in a situation they can go to Europe. Uh, uh, it, it's a difficult situation to, to sign, the, sign these players. Jack, I wish we had more time to chat, but we'll get you as the season progresses here. Okay, we'll do that. Jack McCloskey, general manager of the Timberwolves, who opened camp Friday in St. Cloud. Should be a new experience for them, and for the fans, we get a chance to watch them in St. Cloud. Well, of course, the North Stars also open their season Tuesday night in St. Louis, and the baseball playoffs also begin Tuesday night with Atlanta and Pittsburgh in the National League. And it's good timing for the latest baseball movie to hit the big screen. Tom Selleck starring in Mr. Baseball, in a role that Selleck really gets into. And with more on Mr. Baseball, here's our Mr. Entertainment reporter, Bill Carlson. Bill? Thank you, Mark. Since uh, this is a story of uh, a New York Yankee, which Tom Selleck plays, who, after a couple of bad seasons, winds up playing Japanese baseball in Nagoya, Japan, it is only those folks who remember that Tom Selleck worked out with the Twins who realize that there is a Minnesota connection to this film. He was going to play in Japan, and it was for those scenes as well as those which marked him as a New York Yankee, which had Selleck working out with the Twins here at the Dome last year. He still feels indebted to TK. Uh, Tom was really helpful. He, he talked to me quite a lot and uh, invited me back. Uh, in fact, I was just saying that uh, 
it would have been nice to get back this year and uh, maybe work out with him once again. Kirby Puckett could straighten up my swing a little bit and give me a little static. And his assessment of his playing ability? I'm a good hitter for an actor. You succeed. And acting is about learning to deal with failure and somehow turning it into, into something constructive because you fail a lot in acting. Tom says Japanese baseball can be fascinating. The game can basically look about the same. It, it is, is the cultural difference between the two countries that really changes the tone of the game. Up until very recently, it was considered very impolite to slide into the second base and break up a double play. But I was also one of the only Americans in a movie representing a sport that I love. And so many people, like Tom Kelly and, and Kirby Puckett, a lot of the, the, the twins, um, helped me. I wanted to say the right things about American baseball, but still play a character that was very flawed. And that, that was tricky. I'm, I'm happy with it. And I hope uh, American baseball players, particularly those who confided in me, are, are happy too. Well, since it is uh, more about this, this cross-culture kind of problem than about baseball, ultimately, and since Selleck plays the ultimate um, ugly American, I would say it's only his enormous appeal that gives this uh, motion picture even six and a half baseballs, I would say. Mark? Thanks, Bill. That's, I know it's being a little generous, but uh, <laughs> we'll have you back to rate your favorite baseball movies of all time some other time. Thanks, Bill Carlson. We're going to be back with another great actor of our time, Sid Hartman. Stay with us. October is National Car Care Month. Pick up what you need to take care of your car or truck at Champion Auto now, and you'll save money during our You Out of Care sale. Wiper blades are just a buck a pair. Gallons of antifreeze at Champion are only $1.49 after rebate, and most Champ oil filters are just $1.99. Plus, you can save on right answers. Our videotape of the month is on brake repairs, and all Haynes manuals are just $9.99. Champion Auto's You Out of Care sale is the solution to your car care needs. Check it out. It's where Major Nelson dreamed of Jeannie. Coco Beach, Cape Canaveral. Andy said, why spend $200 a day for some fancy Florida resort? Not when $5 buys you a beachfront lot, and you might even find a Jeannie that isn't in your dreams. Hot sun, white sand, and the locals don't even mind lending a hand with the parking. And you can bring your own supply of old Milwaukee light. Watching that rocket's red glare, sharing an old mill light, it doesn't get any better than this. It's the home of the most exciting game in town, and it's yours. It's Met Center, the home of the North Star, and it's all set for opening night 92. Thursday, October 8th, the Stars host the St. Louis Blues, and tickets are going fast. Call 989-5151 to reserve your seats for the action you've been waiting for all summer. Opening night, the Stars and the Blues, 989-5151. Call now. When you miss out on something, whatever it may be, you usually want to find out everything that happened, everything you missed. It's our job to make sure you're not missing out on what's happening in the world today. Through everything that we do, we want you to learn more about the news that's important to you. And when you turn to us, you can feel comfortable knowing there are a lot of people here working harder than ever to live up to that one promise. Today's WCCO Television. You won't miss a thing. Radio Free. Radio Free. Hey, yeah. Radio Free. Radio Free. Radio Free. Radio Free. And welcome back. And you better believe Sid Hartman will be beaming tonight. Gophers won last night in the fourth quarter. The Vikings won, and Lou Holtz got his butt kicked in South Bend. Sid, not everything. Could that was be one right. of those things. But uh, that was a great game today. But I want to give the Vikings all the credit in the world. But I thought Mr. Dicta lost his team with that display. Oh. I've known Jimmy Harbaugh since a young kid. His father was a assistant Michigan coach there, and uh, tacky move, huh? And uh, I thought it was terrible. I thought that uh, the Vikings earned every bit of it. I'll make that clear. They beat the heck out of the Bears. If they wouldn't have made all those mistakes yeah. in the first half, they might have been 27 and nothing then. But uh, Let's take some calls here, Sid. We've got a lot of people wanting to talk to you right now. We're going to go to Paul with our first call. How are you, Paul? Good. How are you guys doing? Great. What's your question? Uh, I got a question for Sid. I'm wondering when uh, he's going to start giving Dennis Green a little more credit than he has uh, in the past few weeks. Are you getting a bad rap on that, Sid? What's I the think story I am. here? Huh? I've never found any fault with Dennis Green, but I'll, I give Dennis Green a lot of credit in my column tomorrow. The greatest thing Green has done is make Mr. Chris Dolman play like he can play. 
John and Tierlink, the defensive coordinator, may have something to do with that, too. Both of them. I think Mr. Dolman knew that if he didn't play, he might be looking for a job. And if I was making about a million seven, I think I'd play pretty hard. That's a good point. Let's go to uh, Red with your question. How are you, Red? Uh, how you doing, Mark? Doing great. What's yes, up? Sid, uh, what do you thought about Terry Allen's performance today and also um, about the officiation, officiating, which was really terrible? Well, they had more conferences than I've ever seen in my life. And as far as Terry Allen goes, he's the best running back uh, the Vikings have had since the days of Chuck Foreman. Uh, Den great, Den great player. Yeah, he is outstanding. Dennis Green told his team earlier this week, don't expect to get any calls. The Bears had that mystique, and uh, he was right for the most part. It really well, they had so many conferences. Uh, and oh. Jerry Seaman was there. I, I want to call Jerry Seaman the next couple of days and ask him what he thought. Yeah, well, we'll <laughs> no instant replay. At least it goes quicker. Dave, you have a question for us. Hi, Sid. Hi, Dave Ehrlich here from Egan. Do you think that Rich Gannon, is, uh, his arm is good enough to take this team uh, real far in the playoffs? Why not? I mean, uh, I thought the greatest play he made today was one... Uh, for about 10 yards for a first down that uh, brought the ball down about the 15-yard line when they're going in for that last touchdown. I mean, he is an amazing football player. I'll never get, uh, Bob Schnucker was telling me, tried out, I think, Stouffer and Miller mm -hmm. and a, a real, some real top quarterbacks came out that year. He's, I'll take Gannon over any of those guys, and at this point, he's done as well as any he's of them. He's making smarter decisions. You don't necessarily have to have the big gun throw the ball right. 70 yards. He's being a lot smarter on the field right now. What could you do? You, you made one bad throw today. Outside, it was great. Yeah. Terry, do you have a question, a real quick one for us? Yeah, I just want you guys to set the people straight on that. This was a great victory today, but about six or seven years ago, the Vikings came back from a 23 nothing deficit to Philadelphia. Yeah, they won 28 to 23. Right, and I just wanted everybody to know that this was not the greatest victory in Vikings history, although it was certainly a great comeback. Yeah, it was. Good point. I'm glad you made that point. And uh, we got to run here, Sid. This was against the Bears, though. I think a little better against, against the Eagles. A little big. That's right. Sid, thanks Very much. Good. My pleasure. <laughs> We're going to return with uh, our Champion Auto Store's big time play of the game. So stay with us. October is National Car Care Month. Pick up what you need to take care of your car or truck at Champion Auto now, and you'll save money during our You Out of Care sale. Wiper blades are just a buck a pair. Gallons of antifreeze at Champion are only $1.49 after rebate, and most Champ oil filters are just $1.99. Plus, you can save on right answers. Our videotape of the month is on brake repairs, and all Haynes manuals are just $9.99. Champion Auto's You Out of Care sale is the solution to your car care needs. Check it out. Our Champion Auto Store's big time play is Mike Ditka throwing a big time temper tantrum on the sidelines while Todd Scott was doing his big time strut in the end zone. Good to see Iron Mike still has his medal. We'll return in 30 seconds. It's where Major Nelson dreamed of Jeannie, Cocoa Beach, Cape Canaveral. Where, Andy said, men with the right stuff get together. Where else can you see rockets as tall as the redwoods and shuttle flights that'll really take you into the twilight zone? But seeing the mini Whitney didn't exactly pass military muster, it was suggested we park someplace else. Jack, Andy said, why spend $200 a day for some fancy Florida resort? Not when $5 buys you beachfront on the RV lot, and you might even find a genie that isn't in your dreams. Can it get any better than this? The hot Floridian sun and sand as white as a pepsinant smile. You win a bag Plus, the locals don't even mind lending a hand with the parking. And best of all, you can bring your own supply of old Milwaukee light. Standing on the warm Cocoa Beach sands, sharing a cold old mill light, watching that rocket's red glare. As I have often said, it doesn't get any better than this. New coach. New attitude new team the minnesota vikings play at an all-new tempo Wait for the touchdown to anthony carter don't miss a play order your single game tickets now join the vikings october 15th when they take on barry sanders and the defending central division champion detroit lions reserve your metrodome seat by calling 989-5151 or by visiting your nearest ticketmaster location Rose in Sports Sunday has been brought to you by Champion Auto Stores and Crown Auto Service Centers, where you can do it yourself or we'll do it for you. Well, now the Vikings are in first place, we'll see how many tickets they do sell to that next Detroit Lions game. Meanwhile, last 24 hours, been a whole lot of shaking going on at the Dome. We'll see you again next Sunday night. Good night, everyone.
Hello and welcome to the Minnesota State Lottery's official Daily 3 drawing. Tonight's drawing is being audited by the accounting firm Schechter, Dock & Cantor. The Minnesota State Lottery official tonight is Gina Churchill. Our first number is 9. The second number, 4. And the third number is 2. Go for 5 is Minnesota's own all-cash lotto game. Tuesday's jackpot is estimated at $750,000. Get your tickets by 644 on the night of the drawing for your chance to win. Again, tonight's daily three numbers for October 4th, 1992 are 942. Numbers drawn are not official until validated and certified. The Powerball jackpot is climbing to an estimated $22 million. Watch the drawing live at 9.59 p.m. Wednesday. Good night and good luck from the Minnesota State Lottery. I'm Bill Mason, your Chrysler Plymouth dealer in Excelsior. I've been telling you we will not be undersold. Here's why. Looking for luxury? Look no more. I have Chrysler New Yorkers and Fifth Avenues that with package discounts, rebates, and Bill Mason pricing, you save as much as $4,500. Starting at $17,500, the ultimate in luxury and comfort, and $10,000 less in Cadillac. Come see Bill Mason for service, satisfaction, and savings. Bill Mason, Chrysler Plymouth, six miles west of 494 on Highway 7 in Excelsior. I'm Wally the Beer Man for Budget Liquor. Now buy for less at Budget Liquor. Just look at their complete selection of beers, local, domestic, and import at wholesale prices. Now open to the public. Buy for less. Budget Liquor offers savings and selection. Buy local, domestic, and imported beer and wine coolers for less at Buy for Less Budget Liquor. Buy for Less Budget Liquor, Shakopee on Highway 101. Buy for Less Budget Liquor, Monsville on Highway 10. Buy for Less Budget Liquor, Bloomington on 83rd and Lindale. On the road again with a good old boy who went from picking cotton to picking guitar. Willie Nelson's rags to riches, back to rags again story. Country music's good timing man made a fortune and spent it. He had it all until a $17 million showdown with the IRS cost him everything. Now America's favorite outlaw is back in the saddle again, riding high as the comeback kid. The only difference, now he's singing for his supper all over again. The Dazzling Decade continues on Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. Your host is Robin Leach, who travels the world to uncover the stories people will never stop talking about. On this eye-opening extravaganza, LaToya Jackson's last tango in Paris, Michael's renegade sister puts a dark past behind her on a sexy sojourn in the city of light. Russian royalty laughs from the grave as the Tsar's champagne flows free for the first time in 75 years. Ancestors of deposed aristocrats witness treasures that might have been theirs on a bittersweet journey to St. Petersburg. From Las Vegas, it's another opening, another show for dynamic Debbie Reynolds. The tireless trooper sparkles on stage and then off stage reveals Hollywood undercover with Lacey Lingerie of the Stars. Brace yourself for a blast in Boomtown, USA. The bottom line on Miami? It's gone from a snore to a roar in just six years. The accent is on super success in television, movies, fashion and music as a new generation shifts into high gear to turn fizzle into sizzle. The focus is on beauty and the beach in the city that refused to grow old. These sensational stories are more when Lifestyles returns. creation ever. New Snuggle Singles. Come on and see how simple soft can be. Snuggle Singles pop out individually and that's just the beginning. Pop them in and discover a whole world of softness. Once you do, I know it's true. You'll never go back to old-fashioned dryer sheets. Why should you? New Snuggle Singles. Simple, single, and before you freeze, remember this rule of thumb. Get Ziploc brand freezer bags with the gripper zipper. Tough, tiny teeth you can feel gripping so you know freshness is locked in, freezer burns out. Do like me. Protect your ears. There's only one Ziploc. 
With this ripe tomato, I'm going to show you how the Aquafresh Flex Brush helps take care of your gums and your teeth. It has a flexible neck, so no matter how you brush, you can see it's gentle on your gums. Aquafresh Flex for gentle dental care. Not to toot our own horn, but Hershey's Symphony Bars are our creamiest, smoothest milk chocolate, also available with almonds and toffee chips. There'll never be another unfinished Hershey's Symphony. Sounds delicious, doesn't it? Every day, you've got the choice to feel your most beautiful with Salon Selectives. Choose to be your most beautiful. With shampoo levels and conditioning types, choose your combination and feel like you've just stepped out of a salon. Fifty stories up without a net is no place for a nap. So when one of these guys gets a bad cold or flu, which medicine would you recommend? One with an antihistamine that can cause drowsiness or Sudafed severe cold formula? The one that lets you stay alert. No daytime cold and flu product has more maximum strength medicines. For non-drowsy relief, depend on Sudafed severe cold formula because people depend on you from the makers of Sudafed. The lifestyle's 10 years old. Man, you guys are old. You guys are older than the sea almost. That's a long time. Congratulations. Anybody who can hang around in this business, and certainly in the media called television for 10 years, you got to be applauded. Where are those seals? Great job, guys. Great job. Call her Action Jackson. LaToya's Declaration of Independence began with a flash in 1989, literally. Two years later, she distanced herself from her family even further with another bare all-center spread. Then came 1991's blistering tell-all bestseller. Goodbye wasn't all she wrote. She relocated to Europe and put the la in ooh la la at France's hottest nightclub. Latoya became a sellout sensation at the famed Moulin Rouge. As the toast of Gay Paris, Michael's older sister seemed to have finally put the family feud behind her. I'm having a great time. Absolutely wonderful. And the people here, the Parisians, are very, very free with their life. And they live each day for the moment and to its fullest and to be very, very happy. And that's what I didn't do. And that's what my biggest problem and mistake was, I think, worrying about what other people said or thought. And now that I'm here, I don't think about those things anymore. After fleeing the cloistered family compound in 1988, LaToya could look back in anger at her childhood years. She claims that losing her identity was just one of the tragedies growing up at Jackson. I think the most frightening part of it all was in the beginning, when I left home, when I made that final decision, this is it, I can't take it anymore. It was like a bird flying out of a cage. And sometimes I say to myself, who is LaToya? I'm still learning who she is, really, because I never knew I was so sheltered when I was at home. My parents just basically controlled our lives. They did everything. Pouring out her intimate secrets didn't come easy, despite a half-million-dollar incentive. With her family trying to legally block publication, LaToya revealed that writing her book began a slow healing process. I didn't realize that I had to go so far back. And the deeper you go back, the deeper the thoughts, the deeper it comes, and it hurts. It hurts, but you gotta get them out of your system. You gotta do it, and that's what I did. Her book charges years of sexual abuse at the hands of her father, allegations that Joe Jackson denies. And a lot of people ask me, how do you feel that everyone knows about this? And I say, I feel great. I feel good because I want other people to be able to say, yes, my father did this to me too, and it's okay to speak and talk about it because I feel good as a person now, and I don't feel guilty anymore. During her Parisian sojourn, LaToya headquartered in the heart of the city at the Super Deluxe Plaza Athene Hotel. Before saying au revoir, she and manager husband Jack Gordon made some very special purchases for their return stateside. LaToya exclusively revealed their plans to adopt a baby. I think basically I've always wanted to do this because you look around and you see so many children in need who need love, who needs care, who needs attention, who needs help. And I feel and I believe that I can give it to them. And that's why I want to adopt. Blanked by the man she wed in 1989, LaToya quickly felt at home in the city of light. She became the overnight toast of Paris after the world famous nightclub's curtain rose on her Euro stardom. They asked me if I'd like to be the star of the show. 
And I thought about it, and I said to myself, this would have really helped me a great deal to come out of my shell, the shyness, to be more open, to be more like them. And it's done it for me. It's worked. Surrounded by bodyguards and faded by fans, LaToya was finally able to put the past behind her and become her own woman. The ink was hardly dry in her million-dollar contract before the star of the show began to parley-vous français. In the beginning, I had no idea what I was thinking about or what I was saying. Sometimes, so I have to think, what am I saying? But every day, it's getting a little bit better. In every language, word of LaToya's headlines soon reached home. Among vacationing friends, backstage tours of the dazzling sound set became a must. But after hearty congratulations, the big question was, when was she coming home? Having conquered her darkest fears, an older, bolder LaToya Jackson returned stateside. Now she's proved there's no shallow end to the family gene pool. Action Jackson's back. Believe it or not, one of the world's most expensive champagnes, Louis Roderer's Cristal, was originally created as the special brand for Russia's Tsar Alexander II. Now, over a century later, Roderer has returned to Russia's second largest city, St. Petersburg, for a gala celebration of imperial proportions. Like a religious rite, Roderer's return bubbled with historic symbolism. In 1876, a paranoid Tsar sought to thwart those who might place a bomb in his champagne. From Roderer, he ordered an exclusive line in transparent Baccarat crystal bottles. Different from that quaffed by the rest of the court, the Tsar was still above on his special see-through bubbly in 1881 when he was assassinated by a bomb. Its exclusivity died with him. Rodera became such a court favorite that three quarters of a million bottles a year were soon being imported overland from France. Russian royalty drank it like there was no tomorrow. Ah, but there was. As a fifth generation Rodera explained, the champagne bubble then burst. As you can imagine, when the Russian Revolution came in uh, 1917, we lost the market and uh, we had to wait up to 75 years before we could start to come back. The lost treasures of old Russia are revealed as descendants of deposed royalty witness what might have been theirs. A blowout banquet in St. Petersburg as the Tsar's favorite city rolls out a different kind of red carpet. Stay with us, Tavarich. I recently became a new mom, so of course our lives have changed. So when we began thinking about a new car, Safety was a concern. We looked at foreign and domestic cars, but out of all of them, only the Ford Taurus had anti-lock brakes and both a driver's and a passenger side airbag. So now, when I drive our Taurus, I know the most important person in that car isn't me anymore. Lease a 93 Ford Taurus for $249 a month for only 24 months at your local Northland Ford dealer. Powerful cleaning and bright colors. New cheer with Color Guard bleach. Mako Auto Painting is always priced right. Our ambassador paint service could be just what you need. We chemically scrub, sand, and prepare your car's old surface bumper to bumper and give it a high-grade oven finish. Mako's ambassador paint service, a great paint value anywhere at only $189. All backed in writing by over 400 Mako centers nationwide. Sound like a great deal? Take a hard look at your car and you tell us. Ambassador service is a whole lot of it. Now only $189. Because nobody does more for less. If that showroom shine is your bottom line, get Mako. From deep in the heart of Asia, Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus presents The Amazing Mongolians. Live October 21st through 25th at Target Center. WCCO-TV invites you to save $4 on Thursday, October 22nd at 7.30 p.m. with a coupon available at all Minnesota Target stores. 
Tickets are on sale now at the box office and all Ticketmaster locations. Don't miss The Amazing Mongolians, only at the greatest show on earth. It was enough to make the Tsars guffaw from the grave. From the four corners of the earth, their descendants came on a sentimental journey to the old imperial capital. They met at a monastery founded in 1710 by Peter the Great, where Tchaikovsky and Rachmaninoff are buried. Here, the children and grandchildren of exiles openly rejoiced in worship, a ritual conducted in strictest secrecy during 75 years of communist rule. They also praised the works of man, an art collection begun by their ancestors. Rhoda or Champagne hosted a private tour of St. Petersburg's top landmark. The world-famous Hermitage Museum was once the Winter Palace of Russia's incredibly wealthy Tsars. And inside, it's probably where the very first glass of Cristal was ever tasted. The museum's 1,000 rooms are connected by 15 miles of gilded halls. Although 3 million visitors each year gaze in awe upon the priceless treasures, Lifestyles was the first to win permission for television cameras to show the grandeur to the rest of the world. Even more stunning than 2,700,000 works of art under one roof, the staggering realization that all this was formerly owned by one family. On every wall hang masterpieces by famous names, equally recognizable in Russian, as English. The collection spans the Impressionists from Cezanne to Monet. Truly, it's almost too much to take in at one time. Here, another Gauguin. There, another Picasso. And over there, more Rembrandts than anywhere else outside the artist's native Holland. The Tsars purchased most works with rubles taxed from their serfs. Others were heisted during World War II by Soviet troops in Europe. Each is painstakingly copied by students, hoping to learn that special stroke of genius. From lofty reflection amid the museum's grandeur, Rhoda's guests set out to explore the city their ancestors once ruled. Peter the Great built a showcase to impress upon the world that Russians too knew how to live a good life. Ironically, his costly indulgence of palaces and promenades ultimately sounded the call of revolution among a seething underclass. Even Russian royalty's standard of luxury was exceeded at the palace of Tsar Paul I before his assassination in 1801. Talk about lifestyles of the rich and famous. You can thank your lucky Tsars. These guys really knew how to live. Ah, but at what a cost. Amid tapestries, marble and gilt, the despotic Tsar introduced censorship, banned foreign books, restricted travel and had thousands banished by his own secret police. Only the people in power changed with the first revolution. But the second now promises everyone the freedom to enjoy such pleasures as Russia's only five-star hotel. St. Petersburg's Art Nouveau Jewel reopened after the fall of communism with a $10 million renovation. Its unabashed luxury contradicts every preconception of cold comfort Russian accommodation. Greeks knew in a fantastic fusion of egalitarian excess. Witness its space-age spa, the nation's first built within a hotel. It complements the traditional oaken decor of each super suite and contrasts with the imperial scale of each gigantic bathroom. The hotel's restaurant fast became a delight among gourmets who dared to compare it to the finest in Paris. Under stained glass, Rotorous guests feasted on smoked salmon and toasted freedom with their choice of no less than 33 kinds of vodka. Their hosts saved the best for last, a journey back in time to recreate the last lavish ball before the first shot of revolution. Guests followed in ancestral footsteps to yet another palace. Here, Rotorous Jean-Claude Rousard predicted even I would be impressed, and was he right? Like a scene from Nicholas and Alexandra, it was a champagne extravaganza to make any bon vivant pop a cork. To such a dizzying delight, add the gastronomic glory of old Russia and top it off with, what else? The timeless currency of the rich and famous. It's a dirty, rotten job, but someone's got to do it.
After sampling all seven kinds of caviar and copious amounts of bubbly, the magnitude of the party became crystal clear. All together, I'm sure that with the, with the friends around me, we should be able to, to drink nearly 100 magnums of crystal. That's more than 200 bottles. The bubbling occasion was particularly symbolic for one returning Russian. But for the revolution of 1917, the Chuvalov Palace and its treasures would still belong to the blue-blooded Chuvalovs. Take it from one who knows. Imagine that you are going back for the first time in a country that where, where your family used to live before, and it's going back to your own home. It's quite, it's quite something. For the descendants of deposed nobility, the irony of history is bittersweet. Each passionately assured me that despite citizenship of other lands, their soul remains forever Russian. Most amazing of all, it was the triumphant return of a very special champagne that brought them all together. More than just a blowout banquet fit for royalty, Rodora lifted a veil on 75 years of darkness to herald the official return of the good life. The toast was to freedom, to the new Russia and to the majesty of St. Petersburg. How fitting that Peter the Great's Venice of the North is finally wowing Western visitors, just as he planned three centuries earlier. Our salute is to Russia's peace and prosperity. May it acknowledge and learn from its past to create a future as bountiful as the bubbles in a czar's favorite champagne. Still ahead, on the road again for Uncle Sam, Willie Nelson hits the rhinestone circuit as country music's real-life outlaw. But first, Debbie Reynolds reveals a bit of Hollywood memorabilia. And, of course, the famous bustier by Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn wore this, of course, and Betty Grable, and a lot of girls that had fabulous bodies. So, Madonna, eat your heart out. It's not for sale. All this and much more when we continue. What's gotten into my washer? Repairman! Stand back, everybody. I've dealt with this before. 